story time about how my stepdad caught me sending nudes to my stepbrother. This claim is not my story time, it's not me on Instagram. I'm 17 going on 18. This is like a roller coaster, so you better strap in. I met my stepbrother three years ago. He was a new guy at our school. From the moment we set eyes on each other, it was like love at first sight. But my best friend expressed that she liked him first. So there was no way I was gonna step on her toes. But he had no interest in her, at least not at the beginning. One day my bestie and I go to a party, and my stepbrother was there. My best friend is gutsy. This girl went up to him and said, I like you. And then she kissed him. He was shook. For the rest of the night, they danced and kissed. I, of course, was happy for her, but to be honest, I did feel a little bit of jealousy. So I decided to hook up with somebody else. Now, my best friend has a lot of insecurities, and she has an ED. My stepbrother found out about this and felt bad for her, so he decided to ask her to be his girlfriend. Which, looking back, was really nice of him, but it really messed with her mental health. So essentially, he started hanging out with us all the time. So I had to pretend I hated him in order to not show that I actually loved him. And one night, I kissed him. Part two is up. Story time about how my stepdad caught me sending nudes to my stepbrother. This claim is not my story time was sending me on Instagram. But now that my soon-to-be stepbrother was dating my best friend, I had to pretend to hate him in order not to show that I loved him. I was infatuated and in love. Also, we were super compatible. We played the same exact sports, both loved jet skiing, we were both competitive swimmers. After about a year of him dating my best friend, he broke up with her. At this point, I knew that he also liked me too. There were too many signs for me to ignore, but we would both make the effort to hate each other. We would even start to fight in front of my best friend. It was just easier that way. I also had a boyfriend at the time, but I really didn't love him, so I decided to break up with him too. Here's some context. School was pretty small. School would throw a barbecue for 4th of July, and all the parents and students were invited. This is the crazy part. My mom hit it off with his dad. They were inseparable even asked her out on a date by the end of the barbecue and they made it official two weeks later when he asked her to be his girlfriend my mom was dating my crush's dad part three is up Story time about how my stepdad caught me sending nudes to my stepbrother. This claim is not my story time. I'm on Instagram. Now my mom is dating my crush's dad. They made us spend the weekends together. Remember, at this point, I'm trying not to show that I'm actually in love with this guy. But now our parents are forcing us to hang out. Everything moved really fast with them. We got engaged two months later and then married three months later. So now my crush was my stepbrother. Oh yeah, and my best friend hated me for it. My mom and I ended up moving into their house. So now I saw him every single day. Can you imagine having to live with your crush? Like him seeing everything about your life? I was constantly embarrassed. And my best friend started making up rumors about me. He started claiming that I was the one with the ED. But after we moved in together, things changed. He started being very sweet to me. He stopped fighting it and we kissed. Everything was leading up to us doing the dirty. We were both sending each other nudes. And on one occasion, my stepdad caught me. I decided to tell him the truth. My stepbrother and I begged our parents to let us be together. Eventually, they agreed. We're both 18 now and we're engaged. We're getting married next summer. True love is true love. I did the dirty with an underage student and fell in love with him. Disclaimer is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Ma. Here's some context. I'm a first grade substitute teacher and over the the summer i took some courses to be able to do high school i just got out of an abusive relationship my ex does not leave me alone he began stalking me a couple of months ago so i knew that i needed a change and i moved to a different town because i'm a substitute teacher i'm able to have my own side hustles and i moved to this new town everything was better i was earning way more money so i decided to drop my side hustles and focus on being a substitute teacher because that's what i love i expected to be teaching around seventh grade or eighth grade when i got to the school they actually asked me if i could do 12th grade students i was more than happy to say yeah i was intimidated by these students right away i'm 24 so i'm about six years older than they are but these kids i swear could smell the fear on me one of the boys came up to me and started asking me questions right away how old i was where i lived he thought that i was a new student when i told him i was his teacher he went and sat down but for the rest of the class he kept staring at me and i couldn't help but stare back he was incredibly handsome he was 17 going on 18 part two is up my time about how i did the dirty with my student please tiktok do not delete this disclaimer this is not my story time like i said i was six years older than him was 17 going on 18 so on my first day as his teacher he would not stop staring at me and at the end of the class he actually handed me his phone number. I was actually shook. Coming from an abusive relationship, my ex would always talk down on me. He would tell me that I was ugly and fat, even though I was actually a fitness model when I met him, and he forced me to leave my career. But when the student gave me his number, I was really flattered. And guess what I did? I went ahead and sent him a text message. Over the next week, we actually ended up just becoming friends. We would text each other every now and then, and I could tell that he was catching feelings really fast. I know you're gonna roll your eyes, but we actually had a lot in common. After the first week, I was actually transferred over to another grade, and that's when he asked me if I wanted to go to the movies with him. When I got to the movie theater, he greeted me with a flower and a kiss on the lips. I was in shock. And we proceeded to make out the entire movie. After that, I invited him to come over to my house and he said yes. At first, he was shy when we got there. After 10 minutes, he warmed up and we started kissing again. At this point, I realized that maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I told him to leave, but he said he wouldn't. And he kissed me again. Part three is up. Did the dirty with one of my students and fell in love with him. TikTok, please do not delete this. Disclaimer is not my story time. I said I'm on Instagram. After we did the dirty at my house, we were inseparable. He was always coming over to my place since he lived with his parents and I lived by myself. And he was so different from my ex. He would come over and cook me dinner. He would even help me do my laundry. Two months later, he turned 18. This is when we told his parents about our relationship and his parents actually loved me. And I also introduced him to my parents. Exactly a year after we met, he proposed to me. And to this day, we are married. Now here's the bad thing. People around our town 
started calling me a perv and you know that other name but he and i are so happy and the people that called me all those names are now getting divorces i'm still happily married and beautiful and young you can say whatever you want in the comments but when you're in love with someone you just know it Story time about how my crazy celeb ex made me take a lie detector test. This is my own story time. Like I said in part four, he thought that the only reason I was working at that hookah lounge was because I was trying to be a hoe. He thought that I was trying to get rich men, was completely paranoid about me stealing money from him. A few days before that, he had slapped me for the first time. You know why he slapped me? Because we were arguing and I put a plastic bottle down hard at the table. He thought that was unacceptable. So he decided to slap me. A few days after that, grabbed me by my neck and threw me on the bed. The reason he did that is because I asked him never to touch me like that again. At the time, I never realized that people that are on substances are unreasonable you can't tell someone who's on substances not to do something they will want to do it more he was already aggressive because of it because he thought that i was lying stealing cheating hoeing around he asked me to take a lie detector test and of course i said yes because i wanted to prove to him that he was wrong follow for story time about how my abusive celebrity ex made me take a lie detector test this is my own story he asked me to do the lie detector test and i said yes he makes the appointment and we show up let's call the lie detector man tom tom looked me up and down and told my ex that i was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen this right away makes my ex crazy jealous he just stared the guy down then he stares at me like i'm the one that did something wrong the guy straps me up to the machine and i'm already nervous my heart would not stop racing he asked me if my name was really esther very basic stuff then he asked me about all the things my ex has accused me of you guys my ex thought that i was lying about my name he thought that i was sleeping around was stealing his money that i was stealing his substances after the test he tells my ex that i had failed every single question and that i was a liar and that he needed to be careful my ex grabs me and tells me that he's gonna take me home i was terrified part six is up story time about how my abusive celebrity ex made me take a lie detector test this this is my story time. Once the guy tells my ex that I failed the polygraph test, which there should have been no reason for me to fail, I was being completely honest. My ex's face just turns red. He tells me to get in his car and he's gonna take me home. It was complete verbal abuse. He was calling me a dump truck, slut, a whore. Every single bad word you can think of, he was calling me. I get to my apartment and I literally run out of his car. I lock myself in my apartment and two hours later, I see him peeking through my window. Because I'm an idiot, I open the door. He starts to cry and tells me that he's willing to forgive me for all the things that I lied about. Obviously, I couldn't convince him otherwise because I failed the polygraph. Come to find out two weeks later, the polygraph guy was a complete fraud. The test wasn't even real. But somehow my ex managed to get scammed. And of course my ex didn't believe it though. He still thought that I was even lying about my name. Two weeks later, he proposes to me in the bathroom while we're showering. I'm gonna have to do another part. I found my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me. Disclaimer is not my story, Thomas. Send me on Instagram. My mother in law is the most toxic, violent woman I've ever met. And she hates me because I married her perfect little boy. Everything started five years ago. My husband and I met on Hinge. Neither of us was looking for a serious relationship, but we ended up falling in love. We started going out on dates, and every time we would go on a date, we would end up just spending a week together. Eventually, I got my dream job and I moved to New York City. I was working in fashion and making six figures a year. As you can imagine, my life was amazing. He asked me to be his girlfriend and we decided to do long distance. It was totally fine for the first couple of months he was the one that decided to drive five hours to come see me two months later out of nowhere he decided to propose but the thing is i wasn't sure if i should say yes we hadn't been together long and he was already offering to move to new york city with me my life was so good in new york i didn't know if i wanted him to come be with me when i said i wasn't sure his mother called me to convince me to marry him part two is a story time about how i found my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me disclaimer is now my story time with cinnamon instagram my mother-in-law calls me to convince me to marry her son and guess what she managed to convince me so i said yes he ended up moving to my apartment in New York City two weeks later. And that's when my personal nightmare began. My mother-in-law started coming over to our apartment every single weekend to plan the wedding. But all she cared about planning was my husband's stuff. For example, she only wanted to go try on his suits. We didn't even talk about my wedding dress. And this woman had the audacity to plan the whole menu around his favorite foods. One day she comes up to me and says, this is the menu for the wedding without even asking me. No, I was not about to have corn dogs on the menu. Since we had a spare bedroom in our apartment, she started to sleep over and she would tell my husband to sleep with her because apparently she was scared at night. At this point, she's planning the wedding my husband is sleeping with her and my family is paying for it part three is caught my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me disclaimer is not my story time and send me on instagram after she took over planning our wedding we finally got married i was so busy with work that at that point i just didn't care for the next few years she started coming over to our apartment at least once a month and she would sleep over and sometimes my husband would sleep with her i told my husband that it was kind of weird that they slept together and he told me that it wasn't that they were just really close one night i'm sleeping and i hear noises coming from the guest bedroom i know that they're sleeping in there so i walk over and open the door that's when i see them fully naked Naked. And my husband had his arm around her shoulder. Then she runs over to me and starts punching me. And then my husband tells me to get out. Then he gave me some bullshit excuse about how they're recreating childbirth. I kicked her out of the apartment. And my husband got mad at me. I no longer have a relationship with her and I'm thinking about leaving my husband. She still comes to our apartment and just flat out ignores me. What should I do? 
caught my dad cheating with my best friend and he doesn't want me to tell my mom. Disclaimer is not my story time with Cinnamon on Instagram. My dad and I have never gotten along. He's the type of dad that whenever I bring my friends over, he's literally always flirting with them. He'll make sure to be home when he knows my friends are coming. He's really into bodybuilding, so he's pretty fit. So he'll just walk out shirtless into the kitchen while my friends and I are having lunch. I'm constantly telling him to cover up because it's totally embarrassing. Two weeks ago, I noticed something weird. My best friend was drinking a Starbucks in the kitchen. And when I came into the kitchen, I saw her and my dad quickly let go of their hands. Like they were holding hands. Of course, they played it off and I didn't say anything. Our backyard has a pool house and that's usually where my dad hangs out. By the way, my mom is an amazing woman. She owns a Pilates studio and basically pays for everything. I go to the pool house and that's when I find my dad going down on my best friend. His head was up underneath her skirt. I literally vomited as soon as I saw it. Part two, that's when I see my dad's head underneath my friend's skirt. Because he was going down on her. I actually vomited right then and there. As I'm vomiting outside of the pool house, my dad runs over to me and says, what you saw is a mistake. And I say, of course it was a mistake because you're going to go rectify this right now. I handed him my cell phone so that he could call my mom. He grabbed my cell phone and threw it into the pool. And then my best friend comes out like nothing happened. He looks at me and says, will you please just stop overreacting? It's not that big a deal. I grabbed her by her hair and threw her down on the floor. And then I just started attacking her. So angry at my dad, I was even angrier with her. How could she? My dad pulls me off of her and she starts confessing to everything. Apparently they've been doing it for a month. Whenever she comes to hang out with me, she'll stay in the pool house, hide in there for hours and wait for my dad to come home. He was never my best friend. By the way, my best friend and I are both 22. My dad is 47. Here's the worst part. He swore me to secrecy and I agreed. Now they just make out in front of me. Part three is up. Dad will just start making out with my best friend in front of me. At this point, he doesn't care. Claimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. My mom has had a hard time. This would tear my mom apart. I told my dad that if he doesn't stop this, I'm gonna have to move out of the house. This really woke him up though. He told my best friend that he couldn't keep seeing her. And now she's going crazy. She won't stop calling a cell phone or mine. She'll just show up to her house. Then I caught them doing it again. Of course, I threatened to move out again. Don't know how to handle this situation. What should I do? lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove my virginity to them. What should I do? Come from an extremely religious family. In my culture, women should be virgins before they get married. So here's how I lost my virginity. To my cousin. My parents are super strict. I grew up hiding everything from my parents. When I was 14, this new girl came to my school and she basically corrupted me. I had never in my life before even kissed a boy or even looked at one. But she would take me to parties and this is where I started meeting a lot of boys. A boy asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. This is where I had my first kiss. The next summer, my parents took me to visit my my uncles. This is where I saw my cousin. We were both exactly the same age and as soon as we saw each other we were pretty much attracted to each other. I know it's really disgusting and messed up. I was 15 at the time. This meant I didn't know anything about anything. My cousin would flirt with me all the time while we were visiting and it kind of became a game for us. Before I knew it he got me alone in a room and decided to kiss me and after this we just started making out all the time when we were alone. Then he started touching me. Now no I did not give him permission but we were both 15 and it was just understood that we wanted it. And then we did the dirty like all night. Part two is up lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove that I'm a virgin. And I lost my virginity to my cousin. So the first time I did it with my cousin, we did it all night. This was the first time I had ever done anything like that. At the time, I didn't think that I would ever have to then prove to my parents that I was a virgin years later. So after I lost my virginity with my cousin, everything went downhill. I started doing it with other boys. And I even started dating a boy behind my parents' back. My parents, like I said, are super strict. When I was 17, my dad decided to tell me that he had already offered my hand in marriage to somebody. So that meant I was promised to somebody I had never even met. The boy that I was promised to lived in a different country. So four months later, he came with his parents. And when I met him, I was in love. He was extremely good looking, super smart, and he liked me right away. We were both really compatible in every single way. But then I remembered that I wasn't a virgin. The first night we met them, my parents brought up the fact that I was a virgin. And my fiance looked at me with the biggest smile on his face. Not me sitting there knowing that I had already done it with seven guys. From here on, I had to pretend like I was the perfect little virgin. So I basically cut off all the guys I was doing it with. Part three is up lost my virginity before marriage and now I have to prove that I'm a virgin to my parents. So after I lost my virginity to my cousin, I was screwed. My father promised my hand in marriage to a man who thought I was a virgin and his parents celebrated the fact that I was a virgin. Anytime they came to dinner, we would always somehow end up talking about how I was a virgin. It was like the hot topic with my father and his dad. This is when the wheel started turning. I started thinking of ways to tell my family that I was no longer a virgin. And the only thing that I could come up with was telling them that I was R-worded. But that's obviously a horrible idea because then I would have to accuse somebody and it would just be bad. So I decided to just simply confess. I sat my parents down and I told them that I was no longer a virgin. But when they asked me with who, I could not tell them it was my cousin. Instead, I told them it was some random boy from school. That's when my father told me that I had to prove myself a virgin to get married. So I decided to go to a gynecologist and pay him to say that I was still intact. All he did was sign some piece of paper that said I was basically a virgin. So I gave it to my parents and they were happy with that. So guess what I did on my wedding night to pretend like I was a virgin? I saved some period blood. Part four is up.
I had to pretend I was a virgin on my wedding night and this is what I did. I saved some period blood from my last period. Since my father had promised me to a man that I had never met who I did fall in love with, but I wasn't a virgin and was promised as a virgin, I had to do something. The wedding was absolutely beautiful and my new husband and I were getting to know each other so well. So I knew that I did not want to disappoint him because he thought that I was a virgin. So when it came time to getting naked and actually doing it, I was already used to it. So I pretended like it hurt really bad when he put it in. He froze in my period blood in a Ziploc baggie and I put it behind the bed under underneath my pillow. So as soon as we finished, I had already scooped some blood into my hand and I just went ahead and rubbed it on. And it worked. He saw the blood, kissed me, and then we did it again. At this point, I just enjoyed it. No one will ever know the secret and my husband thinks that I've only been his. So I guess it's a happy ending, right? Story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me. Disclaimer is not my story time. I send me on Instagram. Two years ago, I signed up to Hinge. I matched with a really cute guy. I lived in my city, drove an expensive car, and was looking for fun. At the time, I was not looking for a relationship. I just wanted to have some fun. It was lust at first sight. We were both attracted to each other, and he couldn't keep his hands off me. Now, I did like this, but he was taking it a little bit far. We're sitting at a booth and had some drinks. This is when he kissed me. He did not ask me for permission, and he put his hand on my thigh. I let him do it because I knew I was having fun. But then he started inviting himself over to my apartment. I told him that I was definitely not comfortable with him coming over he made a joke about following me home and coming in and doing whatever he wanted to me i laughed it off but was creeped out i told him i got gassy and that i needed to go home what was about to happen was terrifying part two is a story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on instagram i lied and told him that i was getting gassy and i needed to go home we say goodbye in the restaurant and he walks me to my car i drive off and i check if he's following me no he wasn't as soon as i get home i decide to order pizza because i was still hungry i mean i actually was not gassy while i'm waiting for the pizza to arrive i run a bath and put my music on as loud as possible by the way, I live alone and my house is pretty big. I decide to take a quick shower to take my makeup off and five minutes into my shower, my phone starts to ring. It's my date. He says, are you sure you don't want me to come over? You look lonely. I told him, how do you know what I look like? Then he says, just send me your address. I did not. I hung up and blocked him right away. I get out of the shower and I hear the doorbell ring. When I open the door, nobody is there. What happens next is terrifying. Part two is a story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me. I open my front door and nobody is there. Remember, I thought it was the pizza guy. I look closer, and that's when I see a dark figure standing in the corner. Can you imagine how scary that is? My knees instantly started to shake, and that's when I realized it was my date. I told him if he left now, I wouldn't call the cops. Then he runs at me while taking off his belt, puts the belt around my neck, and starts squeezing so hard. Almost immediately passed out. I was wearing a bathrobe. He ripped it off of me. Then he said the creepiest thing. I want to see what you look like passed out. Then the doorbell rings. It's the pizza guy. He finally lets go and tells me that he'll be back. I run outside, and the pizza guy stays with me until the cops come. Unfortunately, the police never found him. He obviously lied about his name. I'm afraid he's going to come back for me. What should I do? My ex-boyfriend is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. Disclaimer is not my story time. If send me on Instagram. I broke up with my ex three months ago, and it's become my personal nightmare. We actually only dated for six months on and off. At the time, I didn't know it, but he was definitely love bombing me from the beginning. At the time, I didn't even know what that was. Not until I started watching TikTok. We met at a bar, which is the worst place to meet a guy, by the way. He was all over me the first night he met me. He was trying to kiss my neck, and he even tried to grab my butt. I told him he needed to calm down, and he did. The following week, he managed to get a hold of my friend on Instagram, and he convinced my friend to give him my number. And my stupid-ass friend gave it to him. He was extremely manipulative, too. I later found out that my friend had a crush on him, so she was just trying to give him my number so she had an excuse to talk to him. Once this man got my number, it was a constant barrage of text messages. He would text me every single morning. He would send me selfies and all of this without my permission. I've only dated broke guys in the past, and my ex has a lot of money. So I decided to go out with him just to get a free dinner. Biggest mistake of my life. He forced a kiss on me on our first date. Part two is up. He actually forced me to kiss him on our first date. Story time about how my ex is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of my Instagram. After he forced me to kiss him, I slapped him and he liked it. He actually said, I like that. I know this sounds terrible, but I kind of liked it. So then I went on a second date with him. He was really quick to do the dirty. He would always be grabbing or touching me. Anytime we were alone, even if it was for five seconds, this man would just pounce on me. He was literally and utterly obsessed with SEX. Don't get me wrong, it definitely was overwhelming, but I had never been with somebody who was so passionate. But then came the jealousy. He was constantly worried about who I was with. He was always showing up to places where I told him I'd be. Even if I was having dinner with friends, this man would show up. He would show up uninvited to my house. Before I knew it, five months had passed. This is when my parents started trying to convince me to break up with him. They hated that he always came around to the house even when we were all having dinner. He would just show up and sit down with us. My father especially hated him. He would also grab me in front of my parents and try to do stuff. Part three is up. 
front of my parents, he would always try to kiss me and touch me. My father hated this guy. Story time about how my ex is threatening to expose our SCX tape if I don't get back with him. One night, I go over to his apartment, which he lives in a penthouse, and he tells me that he has something fun planned for us. I went into his bedroom, and he had this whole setup. Cameras, canes tied to the bed, handcuffs. It was like 365 days in there, or 50 shades of gray. This man knew how to get me to do whatever he wanted. He started kissing my neck, and we started doing it. I knew the camera was there, but it didn't bother me. I never thought that he would ever try to use it against me. Fast forward three weeks later, I break up with him. He decides to start stalking me, and then sends me the video. He told me he'd give it to me if I went to his apartment. I go to his apartment, and he basically attacks me. He me down on the couch and tries to do it with me. Then he told me that if I didn't get back with him, he'd expose me. I got back with him. He's on his best behavior. What should I do? My husband demands I show him my coochie so that he can check me for STDs every single week. Disclaimer is not my story time is sending me on Instagram. Okay, my husband and I have been married for two years. Here's a little background info. My husband is like a six at best. I'm like a 10. Everywhere we go, I get male attention. I'm always getting looked at or stared at no matter what I'm wearing, okay? I could be wearing a sweatsuit and people still notice me. My husband claims to never get jealous, but every time I get male attention, he starts saying things like, oh, you look too pretty today. Every now and then he starts complaining about my jewelry or my makeup. A little more background info. When we first got married two years ago, we decided to have an open relationship. This was mostly for me because I wasn't as attracted to him as I wanted to be. So sexy time was kind of boring. I would have to literally picture other people in my mind in order to feel anything. And he knew all of this. I actually told him that I wasn't as attracted to him as I wanted to be. After a year, he didn't want to have the open relationship, so I agreed. But then this made him get jealous. Part two is up. My husband demands I show him my coochie so that he can check me for STDs every single week. Disclaimer is not my story, Thomas, and I mean Instagram. After he told me that he didn't want the open relationship anymore, I agreed. But then this made him become extremely jealous and toxic. Every single Saturday, I had brunch with my friends. My girlfriends. This meant no men allowed. After we stopped the open relationship, he started asking me if he could come with me to brunch. And of course, I'd be like, no. Then he started insisting on going everywhere with me. He became more controlling about the way that I dressed. Even if I wore a little bit too much perfume, he would start saying things like, girl, you're trying to get attention. You need to stop trying so hard. This obviously became a huge, huge problem for us. And this was like two weeks after we stopped the open relationship. When I confronted him about it, he told me that he didn't trust me, that I was too good looking, and that men were still trying to get with me. I told him that as long as he wasn't comfortable with the open relationship, that I would never want to do that again. Then he started asking me if I thought about other men. The worst part is he started checking all the messages I sent the guys that I was hooking up with when we were having an open relationship with. This made him even more insecure because these guys were really good looking and my husband just isn't. Part three is up. My husband demands I show him my coochie so that he can check me for STDs. Disclaimer is not my story time. It was sending me on Instagram. His insecurity kept growing day by day. One day I come home from hanging out with my girlfriends and he says, pull your panties down. I thought he was just trying to like hook up with me. So I did it. He then spreads my legs, grabs his flashlight and starts checking me. Not just on the outside, literally putting his fingers inside and checking. He even tasted and smelled his fingers. Then he took a picture and notes. I asked him why he was doing that and he said, I'm going to start checking you every single week. Then he said, put your underwear back on. I felt extremely violated. Then I told him to never touch me like that again. Then he said, I'll take your credit card away if you don't behave. I was shooketh. Like I said in part one, I'm treated like a queen. He's always paid for everything and we live in a really beautiful house. I'm not about to lose that kind of life. Since then, he's been checking me once a week. So I decided to start cheating. I'm not gonna let him get away with that. And I'm not gonna get an STD because I'm not stupid. And guess what? My husband barely touches me. He could have just left us having an open relationship and none of this would have happened. I don't wanna live like this and I don't wanna get a divorce. How can I convince him to have an open relationship again? What should I do? Cheated on my husband over 20 times and I don't bother hiding it because I secretly hate him. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's not on Instagram. My husband is the biggest vagina in the world. Here's a little backstory. He and I met five years ago and as soon as we met, I was the one that was interested in him. Which drives me crazy now, the fact that I chased this man. Disgusting. All I did was ask him out on a date and he said yes. After that, he fell in love with me and I did too. Within the first couple of months of our relationship, I realized that he was extremely sensitive. This man would cry a lot and his feelings would get hurt very easily. So I basically had to start walking on eggshells to make sure I wouldn't offend him. For example, I once did my own laundry and I didn't do his. Number one, he was really upset and number two, he started crying because he said that I didn't love him enough. His mood swings were all over the place. And then the worst part, he got fired from his job and basically didn't bother looking for another one. He told me that he wanted to live off of his savings for the next couple of years. This man never wanted to pay for anything. If we went out to dinner with his friends, he would never offer to pay for my dinner. His friends would pay for my dinner. I was so beyond embarrassed. I was footing the bill for everything. He barely paid me rent. Part two is up.
Cheated on my husband over 20 times and I don't bother hiding it because I secretly hate him. Disclaimer, it's not my story, Thomas, that I'm on Instagram. So aside from him not ever paying for anything and fully expecting me to pay for things, I began to hate him. You might ask me why I married him. He comes from a really rich family, so I thought he would eventually ask his parents for money. But no, he did not. Before I knew it, three years had passed. And like I said, he is such a big vagina. He always cries about everything. He was always in a bad mood. He was always getting sick. It got to the point where I couldn't even be around him because every time I was, all he would do was complain about what he was feeling that day. He always had a headache or his back hurt. And so he would ask me to do things for him. I was constantly having to give him massages. I was always going to buy him medicine. This man would wake me up at 3 in the morning and go ask me to buy stuff. I was literally taking care of my child. Oh, and let's talk about our sex life. It was boring. He always did the exact same thing. Never wanted to try anything new. And basically always complained about having to do things to me because it pained him. So I was completely unsatisfied, like all the time. I began hating him more and more every day. Even the sound of his voice triggers me. You might ask me, do I love him? I do. I care about him. But I'm not in love with him. Part 3 is up. Cheated on my husband over 20 times and I don't bother hiding it because I secretly hate him. Disclaimer is not my story, Thomas, that I mean on Instagram. After realizing that I was living with the man-child who made me do everything for him, who cried all the time, who was always so sensitive and always needed something, and complained 24-7, I decided to start cheating. A few years ago, I had met a guy through a co-worker. They always followed each other on Instagram and I knew that he was attracted to me. And he's pretty hot. And rich and good-looking. So I decided to reach out on Instagram and ask him if he wanted to go out. Not only did he say yes, he planned a whole outing. We went hiking and we went to get massages. Then he took me out to dinner. Dinner. And then we went to his place and had amazing sex. I would see this guy about three times a week. Then I started hooking up with another guy that I met at the gym. This guy was really hot, but he didn't have a lot of money, so we never really went out. It was just plain sex, but it was good. About six months later, I met another guy. Again, amazing sex. Do you think my husband noticed anything? No. I would talk to these guys on the phone while my husband was in the same room. I would be setting up dates with these guys in the same room as my husband. Do you think he cared? No. I would even wear sexy outfits to go out with them, and he never asked anything. He would just say, have fun. And then he would call me to complain about what he was feeling and what he wanted me to buy. Am I terrible for doing this? I lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove my virginity to them. What should I do? I come from an extremely religious family. In my culture, women should be virgins before they get married. So here's how I lost my virginity. To my cousin. My parents are super strict. I grew up hiding everything from my parents. When I was 14, this new girl came to my school and she basically corrupted me. I had never in my life before even kissed a boy or even looked at one. But she would take me to parties and this is where I started meeting a lot of boys. A boy asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. This is where I had my first kiss. The next summer, my parents took me to visit my uncles this is where i saw my cousin we were both exactly the same age and as soon as we saw each other we were pretty much attracted to each other i know it's really disgusting and messed up i was 15 at the time this meant i didn't know anything about anything my cousin would flirt with me all the time while we were visiting and it kind of became a game for us before i knew it he got me alone in a room and decided to kiss me and after this we just started making out all the time when we were alone then he started touching me now no i did not give him permission but we were both 15 and it was just understood that we wanted it and then we did the dirty like all night Part two is up. I lost my virginity before marriage and my parents want me to prove that I'm a virgin. And I lost my virginity to my cousin. So the first time I did it with my cousin, we did it all night. This was the first time I had ever done anything like that. At the time, I didn't think that I would ever have to then prove to my parents that I was a virgin years later. So after I lost my virginity with my cousin, everything went downhill. I started doing it with other boys. And I even started dating a boy behind my parents' back. My parents, like I said, are super strict. When I was 17, my dad decided to tell me that he had already offered my hand in marriage to somebody. So that meant I was promised to somebody I had never even met. The boy that I was promised to lived in a different country. So four months later, he came with his parents. And when I met him, I was in love. He was extremely good looking, super smart, and he liked me right away. We're both really compatible in every single way. But then I remembered that I wasn't a virgin. The first night we met them, my parents brought up the fact that I was a virgin. And my fiance looked at me with the biggest smile on his face. Not me sitting there knowing that I had already done it with seven guys. From here on, I had to pretend like I was the perfect little virgin. So I basically cut off all the guys I was doing it with, Part three is up. I lost my virginity before marriage and now I have to prove that I'm a virgin to my parents. So after I lost my virginity to my cousin, I was screwed. My father promised my hand in marriage to a man who thought I was a virgin and his parents celebrated the fact that I was a virgin. Anytime they came to dinner, we would always somehow end up talking about how I was a virgin. It was like the hot topic with my father and his dad. This is when the wheel started turning. I started thinking of ways to tell my family that I was no longer a virgin. And the only thing that I could come up with was telling them that I was R-worded. But that's obviously a horrible idea because then I would have to accuse somebody and it would just be bad. So I decided to just simply confess. I sat my parents down and I told them that I was no longer a virgin. But when they asked me with who, I could not tell them it was my cousin. Instead, I told them it was some random boy from school. That's when my father told me that I had to prove myself a virgin to get married. So I decided to go to a gynecologist and pay him to say that I was still intact. All he did was sign some piece of paper that said I was basically a virgin. So I gave it to my parents and they were happy with that. So guess what I did on my wedding night to pretend like I was a virgin? I saved some period blood. Part four is up. 
I had to pretend I was a virgin on my wedding night and this is what I did. I saved some period blood from my last period. Since my father had promised me to a man that I had never met who I did fall in love with, but I wasn't a virgin and was promised as a virgin, I had to do something. The wedding was absolutely beautiful and my new husband and I were getting to know each other so well. So I knew that I did not want to disappoint him because he thought that I was a virgin. So when it came time to getting naked and actually doing it, I was already used to it. So I pretended like it hurt really bad when he put it in. I froze in my period blood in a Ziploc baggie and I put it behind the bed underneath my pillow. So as soon as we finished, I had already scooped some blood into my hand and I just went ahead and rubbed it on and it worked. He saw the blood, kissed me, and then we did it again. At this point, I just enjoyed it. No one will ever know this secret and my husband thinks that I've only been his. So I guess it's a happy ending, right? boyfriend tricked me into having sex with his twin brother. Disclaimer, it's not my story time. It's on my Instagram. My boyfriend is the most obnoxious man I've ever met. We started dating three months ago. When I met him, I really wasn't into him at all. I met him through friends, and when we would all hang out, he was always the loudest one. He was always making the most inappropriate jokes and was always seeking attention from everyone else. I'm the complete opposite. I like to listen to people speak. I never raise my voice and I don't try to be obnoxiously loud. So I thought he was the biggest piece of shit when I met him. I couldn't relate at all to him. Then he came up to me at a party and started talking to me. That's when I found out that we had a lot of things in common. One of the things that we kept talking about was role playing. I'm into role playing, but I like to keep it safe. Whereas he likes to do some crazy stuff. He's into things like rape fantasies. I told him I was not interested in that, but we kept seeing each other through friends. Finally, after about a month, he asked me out on a date and I said yes. At this point, I knew that he was loud and obnoxious, but he was funny and made me laugh all the time. And I love a guy that can make me laugh. On our first date, he sent his twin brother as a joke. I thought it was hilarious that I confused them. Part two, my boyfriend tricked me into having sex with his twin brother. This claim is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. That's when he made his twin brother go to our first date as a joke. Obviously, I didn't even know he was a twin. So when this guy shows up to the restaurant, I'm like, oh, hey. 15 minutes into the date, he starts laughing maniacally. That's when my real date comes out of the bathroom. And they both start pointing and laughing at me. That's when I understood what was going on. My real date sent his twin brother. Here's the thing. They look exactly the same. They even have the same moles in the same places. Same exact haircut, and they even have the same tattoo on their necks. And they're both really hot. Their bodies are sculpted to a T, and their faces look like Greek gods. Finally, his brother left, and it was just me and my date. We hit it off and had a great time. Everything was really rushed, though. A week later, he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I didn't know what to say. He begged me for about three days. When I finally said yes, I told him that it was on a trial basis. That's when odd things started happening. He once again started sending his brother on dates with me. After I'd get home from a date, he would text me to say, how's my brother? I kept falling for it. Part three is, uh, my boyfriend tricked me into having sex with his twin brother. This claim is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. I finally asked my boyfriend to stop sending his brother on dates with me. He said that it was just too funny and that they both thought it was hilarious. So I asked him if he was getting off on the idea of me and his brother together. Then he said, why? Would you like that? And I said, of course not. I like you, not your brother. Then he said, but we're exactly the same. Then he says, what if you already did it with my brother and you just don't know it? It actually took me a minute to think about it. I mean, how could I know? They both look exactly the same. At this point, I had given my boyfriend a key to my apartment. Big mistake. Later on that night, I'm dead asleep in bed. I hear my door open and I see that it's my boyfriend. Or at least who I thought was my boyfriend. He climbs into my bed and we have sex. I'm half asleep, but I was still open to it. The next morning, he's gone. I call my boyfriend and ask him why he left. Then he says, what are you talking about? I was never in your apartment. I literally could have shat my bed. Then he said, you actually fell for it? That wasn't me, that was my brother. That's when he asked me if I would be open to a relationship with the two of them. Apparently, his brother is obsessed with me. What should I do? I accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. Disclaimer is not my story, Thomas, on my Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. He's in the army, so he travels a lot for work. Most of the time, I'm home alone. And because of this, every time he comes home, I want to be with him. You know, like, do the dirty. But this man tries to avoid it. Now, when we first got married, we lived together for about a year. Everything was, I guess, normal. I've always been the one trying to initiate, but he never really does. So back then, it wasn't like a weird thing. But now that he travels so much for work, I would assume that he would want to have sex with me. And therefore, he would initiate. Every time he comes home from traveling, all he does is lock himself in his office and try to play video games. He says that he needs to escape and that he really doesn't want to face his responsibilities when he comes home. So I'm left to do everything for him when he gets home. Like, I even have to set out his clothes on the bed. I have to make and serve all his meals. 
house and I still have a nine to five job. So I'm pretty much working year round. And I've even started paying for the bills because he asked me to. So the least he could do is treat me right and give me some sex. When I brought it up to him, he got mad. Part two is uh, I broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. Disclaimer is not my story time. It's little on my Instagram. So after I brought it up that he never wants to have sex with me, he got furious. He told me that I was always breathing down his neck, that the happiest time in his life is when he's at work in the army. Now my husband's never been the super affectionate type, but he's never been like that. So I asked him again why he's being so distant and cold. He told me that I was being too clingy, and that after years of marriage, I should have been over him. Over him? So I asked him if he was over me. He looks me straight in the eyes and says, Well, it's kind of hard to be attracted to you when you're not in good shape. My husband's in the army, so as you can imagine, he is in very good shape. He's got an eight-pack and is pure muscle. But I didn't know it was a requirement to be in really good shape to be married to him. When he saw the look on my face, he quickly apologized and said that he was just upset. I asked him what was going on at work, and he told me that he was just having a hard time. Then I asked him if he was interested in someone at work. Of course he said no though he told me that i was being too sensitive so i asked him fine have sex with me right now part three is up accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me disclaimer is not my story time with me on instagram so i demanded the sex i mean i needed proof that he at least still loved me so he takes off his pants and we start going at it but he wasn't getting you know and i tried but the more I tried, the more he complained. Then he said it was hurting. So I just went ahead and tried to sit on it. And that's when we both heard a snap. He screamed in pain and immediately said, you broke it. So we put on our clothes and headed to the ER. The doctor said that he had never seen anything like that before and that I really needed to be careful next time. So on top of my husband not giving it to me and me being totally sex deprived, the doctor's telling me that I need to be careful. My husband basically gave me the cold shoulder for two weeks. Then he told me that he was no longer attracted to me and that he wanted a divorce. Come to find out, he's gay. Not only is he gay, but he has a boyfriend. And he's been with this guy for over a year. While I'm working my ass off paying for the bills, doing everything for him. Hello. So he asked me to get a divorce, but how are we going to split all our money? So I said no. I refuse to let him be happy with this man while he wasted my- I accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. Disclaimers not my story, Thomas, on my Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. He's in the army, so he travels a lot for work. Most of the time, I'm home alone. And because of this, every time he comes home, I want to be with him. You know, like, do the dirty. But this man tries to avoid it. Now, when we first got married, we lived together for about a year. Everything was, I guess, normal. I've always been the one trying to initiate, but he never really does. So back then, it wasn't like a weird thing. But now that he travels so much for work, I would assume that he would want to have sex with me. And therefore, he would initiate. Every time he comes home from traveling, all he does is lock himself in his office and try to play video games. He says that he needs to escape and that he really doesn't want to face his responsibilities when he comes home. So I'm left to do everything for him when he gets home. Like, I even have to set out his clothes on the bed, I have to make and serve all his meals, and I still have a 9 to 5 job. So I'm pretty much working year round. And I've even started paying for the bills because he asked me to. So the least he could do is treat me right and give me some sex. When I brought it up to him, he got mad. Part 2 is, uh, I broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's on my Instagram. So after I brought it up that he never wants to have sex with me, he got furious. He told me that I was always breathing down his neck, that the happiest time in his life is when he's at work in the army. Now my husband's never been the super affectionate type, but he's never been like that. So I asked him again why he's being so distant and cold. He told me that I was being too clingy, and that after years of marriage, I should have been over him. Over him? So I asked him if he was over me. He looks me straight in the eyes and says, Well, it's kind of hard to be attracted to you when you're not in good shape. My husband's in the army, so as you can imagine, he is in very good shape. He's got an eight-pack and is pure muscle. But I didn't know it was a requirement to be in really good shape to be married to him. When he saw the look on my face, he quickly apologized and said that he was just upset. I asked him what was going on at work, and he told me that he was just having a hard time. Then I asked him if he was interested in someone at work. Of course he said no though. He told me that I was being too sensitive. So I asked him, fine, have sex with me right now. Part three is up. I accidentally broke my husband's penis and now he wants to divorce me. Disclaimer is not my story time with me on Instagram. So I demanded the sex. I mean, I needed proof that he at least still loved me. So he takes off his pants and we start going at it. But he wasn't getting, you know. And I tried. But the more I tried, the more he complained. Then he said it was hurting. So I just went ahead and tried to sit on it. And that's when we both heard a snap. He screamed in pain and immediately said, you broke it. So we put on our clothes and headed to the ER. The doctor said that he had never seen anything like that before and that I really needed to be careful next time. So on top of my husband not giving it to me and me being totally sex deprived, the doctor's telling me that I need to be careful. My husband basically gave me the cold shoulder for two weeks. Then he told me that he was no longer attracted to me and that he wanted a divorce. Come to find out, he's gay. Not only is he gay, but he has a boyfriend. And he's been with this guy for over a year. While I'm working my ass off paying for the bills, doing everything for him. Hello.
So he asked me to get a divorce, but how are we going to split all our money? So I said no. I refuse to let him be happy with this man while he wasted my boyfriend wants to act out a rape fantasy on me. Is this normal? He confessed to me that he has rape fantasies last week. Here's some context about our relationship. I'm 34 and he's 47. We met at the gym two years ago when we're both really into fitness. He chased me for about six months before I said yes to even going on a date. But when I think about it now, I realize how aggressive he was with me all the time. Before I ever gave him consent to touch me, he did it. At the gym, he would always find excuses to be touching me. When I finally said yes to going on a date, first thing he did was kiss me without even asking me. And on our very first date, he insisted on having sex. But I kept saying no and I even had to fight him off of me at one point. No, it's not like he was trying to rape me, but he kept putting his hands in places he shouldn't have. Here's the thing. I haven't had a relationship in over 10 years, so I guess I could say I'm a little bit out of practice. I justified all of his actions because I hadn't dated anybody in a long time. And I also was happy because he's so attracted to me he can't keep his hands off me. But he's become very obsessed and possessive with my body. And to be honest, sometimes I like it, but other times it's just too much. It's always in my personal space kissing me, touching me wherever he wants. Without consent. Part 2 is up. Boyfriend wants to play out a rape fantasy on me. Is this normal? Because I haven't dated in over 10 years, him always touching me and fondling me without consent seemed normal. Up until this point, I haven't wanted to move in because I do like my personal space. Last week, he told me that we should move in together. Once again, I told him that I wanted my personal space and that I needed my own apartment. That's when he said, well, then maybe you can please me in some other way. I asked him how and he said, I have a rape fantasy that I want to do on you. He said this with a smile on his face too. He kissed me and threw me on the bed. I told him that I was not ready for anything like that and he said, let's just try it. That's when he pinned my arms above my head and started kissing me. First it was fine because he usually does that anyway. Then he became more aggressive and started using more force. And that's when he started ripping off all my clothes. Of course I stopped him. Mostly because of my clothes though. I told him that I needed more time to accept something like that and that he needed to be patient with me. But he didn't stop. He threw me back onto the bed and started kissing me again. I actually had to physically remove myself from the room. Once I did, he apologized and said that he wouldn't do it again. But then he asked me to just read on the subject. He showed me a website and I read it. Apparently it's completely normal. Part 3 is up. My boyfriend wants to play out a rape fantasy on me. Is this normal? After he was on top of me and I got away, he told me that it was totally normal and he gave me a website to read. Basically said that rape fantasies are completely normal and that I shouldn't be freaked out by it. So my boyfriend went back to asking me again if we could do it. Of course I said no at the moment. I was completely freaked out since he had tried twice without my consent. After I said no for the third time, he still wanted to have sex and we did. But the whole time I could tell that he just wanted to get rough with me. He kept biting my shoulders and grabbing my neck. Now here's the thing. I could say yes to this rape fantasy, but I'm afraid of what he'll actually do to me. The website says you need to have a safe word. And when I explained that to him, he said, sure. This man is pure muscle and weighs twice as much as I do. What if he just gets so into it that he forgets it's actually a fantasy? And I'm also afraid of liking it. But I continue to follow my gut instinct and I keep saying no. He's still always all over me though. I don't think that'll ever go away. Does your boyfriend do this? Is it normal? My friends tell me that I should be grateful that he's so attracted to me. And they think that I should go for it. I think I'll say yes and then make an update video. Wish me luck. My boyfriend has a work wife and I hate it. Story time. Me and my boyfriend have been together for nearly four years now. And we've been long distance for three of those years. This has been because of the pandemic and the fact that we both just live in different cities. There have been absolutely no reasons for me to not trust this man. All of these years long distance, nothing has ever happened for me to doubt his feelings or lose his trust. That was until three months ago. In our relationship, we often talk about our days, like what happened at work, etc. And everything was like pretty normal until he started talking about this one coworker. We'll call her Amy. So my boyfriend, we'll call him Steve, has worked there for two years and Amy had worked there for like five plus years. And to be honest, I can't even say if they only recently met because they've always been in the same department and on the same team. In all his time working there, I have never heard him talk about Amy, at least sort of not how he's talking about her now. So anyway, <clears throat> buckle in. So Steve starts telling me how amazing Amy is and how he is just so happy that he has found Amy as a friend. Now I was all all right with that until he says that she is his work wife. Now I know the concept of a work wife and a work husband. And to be frank, I don't like that. So at that point I asked how long they had been each other's work spouse. And he said it had been about three months. And then he said about how his office had started to joke about how good him and Amy looked together. So apparently his office are trying to get them together by giving them projects that they always have to do, just the two of them. And this has made them grow closer. He always tell me how they look after each other. And Amy even goes as far as to pack my boyfriend lunch every day. So apparently Amy would often ask him what he wanted to eat. Then she would go home, cook it and bring it for his lunch the next day. You know, I really couldn't bear to hear any more. I just felt so betrayed. I just feel so lied to. I just keep thinking about all the times I'd asked how his day was and this Amy girl and these stories just never came up. 
I didn't even know Amy and him were even that close. And then I never had any idea about his co-workers teasing them. And now I just, I just don't know what to do. I have spoke to Steve about it, but he says that I'm just blowing things up for no reason. And I just feel so betrayed. What do you think I should do? Because am I the arsehole for not telling my boyfriend that I'd had plastic surgery? I've been dating this guy for about four months now. When I was 22, I had a nose job because I'd broken my nose twice as a kid and I was left with quite a large bump. Then when I was 23, I had my boobs done, which bumped me up a few cup sizes as well. To be honest, these were lifelong things that I've been insecure about and bullied over, so it was a relief to get them done. So now you've got the context, let's move to the present. I met my boyfriend, we'll call him Steve, through a friend. And up until now, things have been great. Last night, I was sat on the sofa with him, just scrolling through social media. And this is when I stumbled upon an old classmate's vacation pictures. In the picture, she's wearing a bikini and she quite obviously has had her boobs done. Now, don't get me wrong, she looked great. But you know, you could definitely tell there was a little summit summit in there. So Steve glances over and he just says, gross. So of course I then asked like, what's your deal? And he said that women that get implants or other procedures are a massive turn off to him. He then went on to say how men prefer women that are natural and don't have two balloons on their chest. And he just kept saying how insecure it made her look. So you know, I just couldn't help but laugh. So I turned around and said, well, you're turned off by me then. And of course, he got really confused and asked what I meant. So that was when I informed him that I had had procedures done. He kept denying it and saying that I was just joking. That was until I showed him old pictures of me. He then got really, really quiet and left shortly after that. I then got a text from him saying that I should have disclosed this to him on our first date. And that I have led him on. And now he's saying how he needs to reconsider things. It's now the next day and I still haven't heard anything. And I am just so bewildered by the whole situation. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for getting my sister-in-law arrested at her wedding? So I rescued my dogs about six months ago from a puppy mill. When I first got them, they had quite a few medical issues, but they adjusted to their new life really, really well. And my now sister-in-law, we'll call her Amy, had met the dogs a couple of times before the events of this story occurred. Amy asked if my dogs could be the ring bearer and flower girls at her wedding. I should probably just say that me and Amy do not get on at all. And in the past, she's said some really cruel things about me. She says these things to my family and everybody else who will listen, to be honest probably worth mentioning that I'm not even invited to the wedding because I would quote ruin the vibe so I told her that she would not be using my dogs in her wedding for multiple reasons one of them being you know I wasn't invited to the wedding and also that the dogs were having surgery a couple of days prior safe to say Amy was not happy about being told no so this event happened a couple of weeks ago so all my dogs had had their surgery on a Thursday and the wedding was set to be on Sunday evening so me and my husband went to run some errands on Sunday morning and when we left all of our dogs were asleep so all of a sudden I get a notification about motion at my back door so obviously I check the notification and I see Amy just opening the door and walking into our house so I turned to my husband and I was like we need to go back to the house now so at this point I boop boop call my brother and I'm like get your wife out of my house before I call the police my brother then hung up on me and when I got home all my dogs were gone and their cones from the surgery that they had three days ago were left in their crates so again I'm beep 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 popping on the phone to the police for breaking and entering and you know theft so the police arrived and I showed them the video of Amy just walking into my house and then the one of her leaving with our dogs so obviously it's the morning of her wedding so I told them where the venue is because I'd seen a copy of the invitation so the police made it to the venue and they were able to locate every single one of my dogs and because they didn't have the cones on one of them had managed to open one of her stitches and she was bleeding so amy was arrested in the middle of getting ready for her wedding she actually ended up getting charged with a class a felony and then like a couple of misdemeanors now everyone's saying that i overreacted about the situation and that i ruined the whole entire wedding and then some people are saying that i should pave the whole wedding since it didn't get to go ahead so what do you think this is the split second decision that changed my life. So one day I decided to break up with my partner. The timing just wasn't right. I was only 20 and I just wanted to go out and party. I had a full-time job and on top of that, I was in a full-time student program for aerospace engineering. I called her and asked if we could meet at the science building. And to this day, I don't know why I picked the science building. I think it was because it was close to her dorm and close to the parking lot so I could get it over and done with and then dip as quick as I could. And as I saw her walking towards me, I looked up for the last time as my girlfriend. And at that point, I started reminiscing about about our relationship there was all the ups and downs how it began and at this point it had only really been about six months and i thought she was walking towards me and she was like a hundred and odd feet away at this point i had started dating her because she was marriage material she was mature beautiful and super fun to be around and anyone would be so lucky to have her 
it would have been so hard to find someone like her. And not only were our sense of humour super similar, we also really complimented each other as well. I would hate to see her cry and it would have been so hard to find someone like her again. Actually, do you know what? It wouldn't have been hard at all. It would have been absolutely impossible. So I was thinking, yes, it's going to be hard to find someone, but at least I'm going to get these next three to four years to myself. And after that, I'll just have to find someone as perfect as her to spend the next 40 years with. But then it hit me that I'd be trading like 40 years of pure joy for three to four years of just immature fun. And that was when I realised I was about to make one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And it was only when she got about 30 feet away from me that I decided to change my mind. So fast forward, we are now 28. This woman is now my wife of three and a half years and is currently carrying our first son. And now I just couldn't be happier. Tomorrow, I'm going to ruin his life. Story time. I've been with my boyfriend for three years now. We had planned on getting married when our lives had settled down. I love him more than anyone else in this world and I've sacrificed so much for him. I've moved away from home, turned down jobs, and it was all just so I could stay with him. I stood by his side when he decided to go back to school and I just gave him the world. Then he cheats on me. I found out over a month ago, but the scumbag got cocky and I found out he was cheating on me with two different women. One of them is a TA at his university and the other one is his best friend's girlfriend. I write this post choking back venom. I loved him so much, but now he will be the world I burn to nothing. So I pay for everything since he quit his job last year to go to school. No, I was more than happy to help. I make enough to support us both. The only upside of it is that all of his student loans are in his name and have no connection to me. It'll hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I'll survive. So I've held out for a month, which is enough time to plan what I like to call the day his world burns. So tomorrow we are hosting a party. I've arranged for his family to come, but unfortunately my family can't attend. I've packed everything valuable already and the suitcase is in the back of my car. So my brother will come and pick up the car during the event tomorrow, which my boyfriend would normally drive himself to school in, even though the car is in my name. The joint account, which is all my money anyway, is already empty. The event will be great and he thinks it's so that we can announce our engagement to his family. However, what will happen in reality is this. I will announce my departure from his life. I already have a new job lined up, which is in a different state. I'll start by showing him the screenshots of what he said to these other girls and the many other degenerate things his mind came up with. And then these will all be passed around the room. I will then hand him the notice to vacate as I've already broken our lease. We need to be out of the property by the end of the month. I will then end off by saying that I've reported that he was sleeping with one of the TAs from one of his classes last semester and that I am really sad that I won't see the fallout from that situation. Oh, and his friend also has a message for him that I will deliver, informing him that his friendship group never want to see him as well. And with that, I will leave and I will not look back. I tried to ruin his life. Storytime updates. If you haven't watched part one, go watch that first. Yesterday, I planned to ruin his life in front of his whole entire family. I worked for a month to create a scenario that I knew would cut him the deepest. I had patiently been waiting for the moment to storm out of this man's world with a blaze of glory. And then my story hit the front page of Reddit so I realised I'd messed up when he wasn't replying to my text anymore. He hadn't shown up hours after he said he'd be home. So, you know, I was hoping that it was just a happy accident. Listen, I don't know how many men in the world are cheating on their soon-to-be fiancé with their best friend's girlfriend and the teaching assistant from their school. However, the one who mattered in my plan found my Reddit post. So I called his mum and found out that he had run home to his parents' house. He had told them that we'd had an argument and he thought that we were probably through. I was, and to be fair, still am livid with myself. So his mum rang me and asked what had actually happened because he'd left out some details. So I quite happily told his mother. I then heard her shouting before she hung up. I then texted my ex and said that he had until the morning to return my car until I reported it stolen to the police. And if the car wasn't there in the morning, I'd send screenshots of the messages that he sent to the girls, to his parents and to his siblings. Safe to say the car was sitting in my driveway the next morning when I woke up. I did contemplate sending the texts anyway, but then his mum sent me like a really heartfelt text yesterday apologising for her son's behaviour. That is not the right colour. And I feel like his family can definitely be spared from his degenerate actions. Me and my dad are moving all of my stuff later today and I will not be coming back. And I know you'll be watching this, you cowardly piece of shit. Just know that I'm not above sending out the screenshots if you ever dare to come back into my life. Oh, and your best friends now know all the information and I can't control what they do with that, so good luck. Am I wrong for sitting on my boyfriend's friend's lap? 
Me and my boyfriend, we'll call him B, have been dating for about two years. He is very intelligent, thoughtful, and super polite, but he is a massive people pleaser and does not like confrontation at all. He has his best friend, we'll call him K. K has these big eyes, a cute button nose, and is just super adorable. However, he does have an awful personality. He's the type of person where if you don't know him, he's just prickly and rude. B says that is literally just how he is. K likes to make fun of me all the time, but my boyfriend says it's just him teasing and that he does really like me a lot. So my boyfriend keeps inviting Kay on outings that are supposed to be dates. Most recently, we had organized to go on this little hike, like a nature outing type thing. So when I arrived, I found out that he had also invited Kay. So the three of us did this easy, but it was quite a long hike for the entire day. And at the end of the hike, there's like this little ride that takes you back down to civilization. It's quite hard to explain, but it's basically like a truck that's attached to a trap that has seats. So it's not like enclosed or anything. You can still see the night sky and you can feel the breeze. And the ride comes around every two hours. When we got on, there was loads of people waiting. So I didn't manage to get a seat. The driver kept yelling at me that I wasn't allowed to stand up. So I asked B if he wouldn't mind moving over to make a gap considering I'm quite small. But he said he didn't think it was allowed considering it was just one seat. And he told me just to wait for the next ride to come. And I did not want to wait alone in the dark for two hours to wait for the next one to come and the driver was yelling at me to either sit down or get off. So then Kay said that I could just sit on his lap. I wasn't in the mood to joke around anymore, so I just sat down on his lap. So the ride takes around 50 minutes to an hour. We got off, my boyfriend and I just went to our car and I thought that was the end of it. So my boyfriend in the car says that I embarrassed everyone and Kay with the stunt I pulled on the ride. He said how I'd acted really immature and I shouldn't have done what I did. And he said that I should have just waited for the next ride to come. He requested an apology and I said, well, I haven't done anything wrong. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for letting my husband's party go horribly wrong? So my husband threw a barbecue party for his friends and it was a complete disaster. So my husband likes to invite his friends and note his friends around for barbecues. I'm not close with them at all. And this man prides himself on his barbecuing skills. But the thing is, I'm the one that always ends up doing everything. So all he ever does is sort of just buy and grill the meat and then he collects praise for the whole event whereas it's me that buys the drinks and then it's also me that has to clean up and tidy the patio and decking area i prepare all of the sides and vegetables for him and his friends and then throughout the night i'll make sure that everyone's drinks stay topped up too we don't use like plastic paper cups and stuff like that because i find it a little bit wasteful so i wash up at the end of the night as well and i'm not gonna lie it just kind of feels like non-stop work for me all night and literally last week he was like i'm having all my friends around this saturday i was like okay and I said like, do I know anyone? He quite abruptly said no, and that it was all of his friends from work and none of their wives were coming. It was just a boy's night. And I was like, fine, guys night, fine. So I said, if you need me, I will be in my craft room with a bottle of wine. Do not disturb me, but you enjoy yourself. And he was like, yeah, I can handle it. Spoiler alert, he did not handle it. From what I can tell, he did the meat all fine, but he just didn't do any of the other preparation. I was so sick and tired of being taken for granted. And to be fair, he never actually asked me for help. I just do it, but it kind of felt expected. So I just sat back and did nothing. The patio was an absolute mess. All the upholstery on our furniture was so messy from the dogs. There was stuff just absolutely everywhere. The table was messy. So they all arrive. I welcome them, say hi, and then I excuse myself to my craft room. So I just popped some music on, I drank my wine and just worked for a little bit. Cue the messages. He started asking for help. He's like, where are the plates? Context, we only keep a small amount in the kitchen. The rest of them, they're in the basement. Where are the cups? Why isn't the beer chilled? Where's the non-alcoholic beer? Did you not buy it? Besides, and I just replied and said, you were handling it. So this is where I feel like I might have been the asshole. Let's face it, it would have taken me literally minutes to tell him where everything was. I checked on the guys a little bit later and it was an absolute disaster. Everything was everywhere. The table was all cluttered. They had had to order takeout so they could have some sides. There weren't enough silverware or dishes. Everyone literally had to go and drive to get more drinks. Today, he's been super grumpy all day and he has said that he's disappointed in me. He said he's sad that I didn't pull my weight and that I was the one that had made our family look really sloppy and bad. I told him that I am not his little housewife. I said if he embarrassed himself in front of his workmates, he's a big guy and that's on him. He got really mad and went for a run to blast some steam. Oh, and the patio is still full of dishes. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for telling my mum I refused to fix a problem that she and my stepsister created? When I was 15, my then 19 year old sister had a baby. She was still living at home at the time and she didn't know who the dad of the baby was. And my mum had decided that I would need to babysit every night after school until someone got home. Me and my stepsister were never family, we never called each other sisters. So because of that, I never called her daughter my niece or planned on being an overlord. 
really impactful auntie. And after I moved out, I've seen her three times in the past six years. I did not have a strong attachment to her, nor did I ever, ever, ever consider her one of my own. But my mum and sister had hyped me up to her, apparently. They've told her all of these stories about me that just simply aren't true. There were stories about how I used to cuddle her to sleep and call her my baby. And apparently how I adored her more than anyone else in the whole world. So my mum had taken a few pictures of me and her that she'd staged when she was a baby. And she shows her these pictures as if they're moments that my stepsister and my mum just sort of walked in on. So she has now been waiting for this aunt figure who just considers her her child. So we've seen each other for three times this year, mostly because I'm having a baby. And this girl has been so incredibly jealous and angry about it. So the last time we saw her, we were at our grandparents' house and it was focused around the baby and she was very emotional about it. And she kept randomly trying to grab my attention. And this is when what my mum and stepsister had been telling her sort of came to light. She was accusing me of replacing her and with my baby sort of stealing her place and saying stuff like I was trying to push her out of our family. She was saying like, oh, you used to do all that stuff with me and now you don't care about me. And she sort of kept saying how none of it was fair. She kept trying to ask my stepsister to do all the stuff I was doing with my new baby with her again. So this is when what my mum and stepsister had been telling her all came to light. And she basically wanted to dedicate myself to her again the way I apparently had when she was a baby. And she said that she wanted me to put her before my own child. So my grandparents actually ended up telling my stepsister that she needed to leave. And after a whole lot of arguing, she eventually left with her daughter. My grandparents turned to my mum and was like, what the hell were you thinking and what happened there? So everything eventually settled down. But my mum called me that night and said that I needed to ring the stepsister's daughter so that I could sort everything out with her. She basically said that I was the one that needed to fix the hurt that she was going through. And I told them it was not my job to fix a problem that her and my stepsister created. So what do you think? I broke up with my boyfriend over the Super Bowl commercial. Story time. So for those of you that are unaware, during the Super Bowl, Tubi, which is a streaming platform, played a prank on the viewers. They basically made it look like someone's changing the TV over to their app. And I'm sure in many households, it caused chaos and was a funny event, but not mine. My boyfriend thought that I was the one changing the channel and started screaming at me violently. And he was calling me things that I don't even want to write down. Even when I kept telling him that it was a commercial, he kept blowing up at me. He even punched a hole in the wall. So he eventually realized what had actually happened and really awkwardly apologized. But I was so disgusted to his reaction to a 15 second commercial. I feel like if you can't keep your anger in check and get violent over something so small, I don't wanna be around you. We've been together for over a year, but we've been living together for the past two months. And I have known him to get angry at things sometimes. This really took me off guard. And I cannot forget how I felt around him during all of this. So in the morning, I packed up some of my stuff and I've been staying at my parents' house. I had left him a note basically saying how I felt and that I didn't think we were gonna work long term. Since then, he has been messaging me and calling me repeatedly. My parents told me that I was just overreacting since he's had a bit to drink and the Super Bowl gets everybody riled up. But I don't feel like I am. I don't feel like it's normal to get that angry. Am I the arsehole for asking my boyfriend to stop being friends with someone? I know how that sounds, so let me explain. Me and my boyfriend Luca have been going out for about two years and everything's been going great. And he has a best friend called Tammy and I'm not gonna lie, their relationship makes me very uncomfortable. So about four years ago, Tammy and Luca actually hooked up. He said it was just a one-time thing and they very quickly realized that they were just better off as friends. This didn't bother me. He was very upfront about it and made it very clear that they were just friends now. He had a life before me and I very much appreciated his honesty. So one day near the beginning of our relationship, Luca looked upset. I asked him what was up and he said that he told Tammy that he was getting serious with someone and she had freaked out. And she said that she thought that at some point they would have got together eventually, even though she had a boyfriend at the time. So at the time, Tammy and Luca weren't anything. They were just having fun with people in between relationships. And this had really upset Luca because he thought they were just friends, so he felt totally blindsided by this information. He then didn't speak to Tammy for six months. So six months later, Tammy calls and she apologizes. She said that she was in a bad place with her then boyfriend and that she missed his friendship. Luca spoke to me about it and I said I was fine with it as long as he was clear that they were just friends. Now I've been with my partner for two years and I met Tammy twice. Every time I'd invite to something that was a group event, she'd always say no and I didn't think too much of it. However, she then started to make appearances when I wasn't there or I was away for work. So she started to call up Luca and ask if he was alone or if I was busy and if she'd had a bad day, she would say she just needed time alone with her friend. I finally snapped when I was away last weekend. So Luca had posted a picture of him and Tammy out for drinks. I had invited her to six different events this year, but she said she couldn't commit to anything until June, 2023 because her schedule was too busy. 
I said to Luca, it upsets me that you only hang out when I'm not there because it makes me think something's going on. I don't mind them hanging out by themselves, but every time I'm away, Tammy is suddenly free. Originally, Luca said that he thought I was overreacting. But now he says that he sees my side of the story and he won't be friends with Tammy anymore. So what do you think? Am I the arsehole for giving my mother-in-law a fake copy of our house skin exposing her at Christmas dinner? I want to preface this by saying I married my husband about a year ago. His mom is extremely snoopy and annoying as fuck. She can't help it and it's just how she is, as my lovely in-laws say. So me and my husband moved into a new house recently, but my mother-in-law kept pushing to get an emergency key. And she promised that she would only use the key in an emergency. But given that she had a key for our old apartment and she walked in on us being intimate twice, my husband didn't think it was a big deal. I just didn't feel like I could trust this woman, but since she kept pushing, I sent her a fake key. And she had the most smug look on her face when I hand delivered her the key. So days and weeks go by, and on Christmas dinner, my mother-in-law angrily calls out the fact that I gave her a fake key. And she shamed me for doing this in front of everyone. So in my defense, I asked her how she'd found out it was fake. And she said her and her husband had been around at about four when me and my husband were out of the house. So at that point, I reminded her. Didn't you say you would only use it if there was an emergency? So basically, you tried to get in when there was no emergency and you broke the promise you made to us. She started to go red in the face and everyone started to stare at her and some even laughed at her for how red she was going. She then got up from her seat and ran into the kitchen where she had the biggest meltdown. It was so loud that even the neighbours next door could hear her. I've never heard a 60 plus year old woman throw a tantrum like that. Needless to say, the rest of the dinner was really awkward. My husband and his sisters kept giving me looks and then my husband went off at me in the car. He said that I lied, exposed, humiliated, manipulated his mom and he said he wouldn't have let me get away with this if he didn't know. And we then had this argument and he is now demanding that I apologise to his mom. He said that I need to apologise for my childish behaviour and ruining Christmas dinner for the whole entire family. So what do you think?